Welcome to instructions for Word, Module 4. This is working with advanced tables. It's, um, right now it's currently three pages, so on the first page. What we're going to do is work with the two new tabs. I just want to show you that if I'm outside the table, I don't have those new tabs. I'm up in the title. I have to actually be in the table to get the table design and table layout tabs. I'm going to go to the layout one. And right now, I have um, the layout is default, which is all align top left. And what we're going to do is try all of them. So the first one is fine, align top left. And then I want to go into the next cell, and I want it to be this one, align top center. So it puts it on the top, centered. Click in the next cell, and I'm going to check, try the next one, align top right. Now I'll move to row two, and I want to move to the bottom row here. Align center left, and go into the next cell, and trying each one to see where they put the text. The next one, and I'm on align center right, so it's in the center of the cell. Now I'm over here, and I'm going to choose the bottom. Align bottom left, align bottom center, and align bottom right. So I've tried all of them just to see where it puts the, the text. Probably the most popular one is this one here, align center left. So it's still on the left margin and it's centered in the, the cell itself. So, and when I'm in the cell, it tells me which one I selected. So if I clicked in here, it's showing me this one. If I click here, so it shows me what I selected. So you've tried them all, all the different layouts. Click in the next cell here where there's text. So um, it is set, you can see here, a left, um, a line top left, and it's uneven on the right, jagged letters. You can use that justify, and I'm just going to use the shortcut, so I'm going to control J and it justifies it. Now in this one, you can change the direction of the text. So there's only three, so there's the um, horizontal, and then there's um, going down text, and up. I'm going to keep it there, but I'm going to put it in the center. So the other thing that we can work with is combining cells. And I want to combine two cells in one column. So I'm just anywhere in here, hold and drag down. So I want to combine these two. So it's called merge cells. And while I'm in here, I want to draw an X. So I'll go to table design and I'll go into borders, the down arrow. And um, right now, um, you could choose diagonal left, but I'm gonna change the um, pen color to automatic so that it's on that one. And then I'll choose um, diagonal down. And it's still, there you go. And then the reverse diagonal up. And then I have my X. Now I wanna merge to a cross across two columns. This was within one column. So the same thing, hold and drag. I'm going to go back to table layout and choose merge cells. So I merge the two across. So we've merged in a column and across columns. Now we're going to try split. So I'm going to select split cells. I want two columns, but keep it one row and click OK. So I have two new columns but in the same one row. And this one, I'm going to do the opposite. I'll keep it one column, but increase it to two rows. So it's still one column, but, but um, two rows. And just to, to share with you, um, you could have chose more, or you could have done two and two, whatever you'd like. So I'll go back to the two rows. And in this one, I just want to um, put a, uh, a, um, a, a, a shading, but you can also choose a pattern. So I'll go back to table design. So I'm in that last cell, table design. I'm going to go to um, borders and go all the way down to the bottom, borders and shading. From this dialog box, this is the borders of that cell. I'm going to go right to shading. And I'm going to choose, we can change the color later, but the, the first style that comes up is just the different shading of, of particular color, and this happens to be gray. It gets darker as you move down the percentage. And here are the designs you can select. So I'm gonna go with um, the light 
um, diagonal down. And then if you want, you can change the color of it, usually a lighter color. But the thing that you wanna make sure, it does not apply it to the entire table. It should only be to this particular cell and okay. Now let's move on to the next page. So the next page, um, it's set off by tabs. And if we were to put our ruler on, you would see that it's set off by tabs. Um, instead, I'm gonna leave the title as it is, but I want to put it in a table format. So select your entire list and then go to insert table and choose convert text to table. And it should be four columns and 29 rows and click okay. So now it's in a table. And um, we're gonna make some changes to it, but before we, we do that, we're gonna, cause right now it's very, very narrow each, each um, row. Before we do that, we need to add a row above it. So be anywhere in the first row, go to table tool layout and select insert above. And then this one will be city tab, state tab, income and house cost. And it, it did, um, house cost is a little bit smaller. So if you go to the boundaries and you get those double arrows, you can just move it over a little bit so that they're some similar in size. And then, then what we'll do is um, with the, the first row, I'm gonna select it and I'd like to have it center. So the column titles are center. Also, if you want, you can increase the size of it and maybe put it in bold. The next thing I'm going to do is select, this box here selects the entire table. And what I'd like to do is make it the each row a little bit um, wider. So I'm gonna to go to the height and increase it to, I'm gonna to go to 0 0.4. And then you can see that everything is up in the left align. So if I click in here, you'll see that it's left align. What I'm going to do is select all of the states, just the first two columns, and what I want is this one here, align set, um, center left. So it's in the middle of the center. But when it comes to um, the income and house cost, I'm gonna select those two, not the, the column titles, and drag it down. And for this one, so it lines up evenly, I'm going to choose align center right. So it looks a little bit neater. And then what I also wanna do is put it in alphabetic order by state. So it doesn't matter I'm in any state, um, doesn't, you don't even, um, can be in the top row, it doesn't matter. And you're gonna go to sort, and you wanna sort by state. Just make sure that you have um, marked off that it does have a header row, so it doesn't put that row in alphabetic order. It should be set for um, text and ascending order and okay. So it's in order by state. Now, if you look at the state um, and then you look at city, uh, Denver or um, San Francisco, it's in order. Everything looks to be in order. Massachusetts, yeah, it looks like it's in order pretty much. But what you could do if we went back to sort is if two states were the same, then you would want it to look like by city. So for example, if you were sitting in the homeroom and there was you were in alphabetic order by last name, if two people have the same last name, then you look at their first name. So that's the same thing here. If two states are um, the same, then look at the city so that they're in alphabetic order and then click OK. And I think everything looked good anyway. Nice. All right, so the only thing is when we can also select the title and just to make it, you can put it in the center, a little bit larger, maybe bold, change the color if you'd like. And then when you're scrolling down, because you made the, the rows a little bit larger, it moved on to a second page. But you don't have column headings here, so how do you know what this stands for and what this stands for? So come back to this page here, click anywhere in the um, column titles, and in Table Tools Layout, click repeat header rows. And then when you scroll down, there's the header on this page. And we'll now move to page five or four. 
And this one, um, we're, we're going to do a couple different things. So first thing, I like to put ice cream treats instead of just the plain font. I'm going to put word art. So insert and way over in the text area, select a word art, your choice. You can always change the color of it if you want. This is the fill. So if you want a different color fill and an outline, um, you can go into transform, get real fancy. You can even center it. And then for um, prices, I'm going to choose heading one. And for flavors, heading one. Now, I want these prices to be over on the far right. And then I want the dots to go across the leaders. So select these four items. And then go into the paragraph dialog box launcher. Click tabs. And we're going to set a tab at that right margin, um, 6.5. Or actually, I'm going to do 6.3, and we're going to set it as a decimal tab. So all the decimals line up. And then I want the dots, or you could do that. Maybe we'll do the dashes. Click set and OK. So they lined up perfectly. Now, for the flavors of ice cream, uh, I want to have them in columns so that you're not just reading straight down. So I'm going to select all of the flavors. Just don't select that blank line at the bottom. And you'll click Layout, Columns. You could choose two, or we'll go with three. But before I do that, I want to put them in alphabetic order. So I'm going to choose A to Z, OK, and then choose Layout, Columns, three. If you wanted it to go back to its original, you would choose one, one column. But we'll go with three. So if we were to look at all of these right now, um, one page, they're all at the top, at the top of the screen. Because of that one inch top margin. So what we'll do is go to layout page setup, and under the tab layout, vertical alignment, center. So they're all in the center of, of the page. This one didn't do it because of the word art. So on this page, um, control A, and then go back to page setup, and then choose center again, and OK. And that, that way I'll do it. It's because of the word art we got in the way. It's an object, but it's fine. If you wanted to right here, you could press enter just to give it a little bit more space between the word art and the content. And that is a save and submit. Thank you.